Welcome to The Nation. I'm Tamina Kalji coming to you live from the Barama News Channel Studios where it's all about you. Now today's edition of The Nation, we kick off the week with um, a discussion in conjunction with the upcoming International uh, Day of the World's Indigenous People, which is always celebrated on the 9th of August. So in conjunction with that, we have in the studio with us here today, three Orang Asli or Malaysian Indigenous background, creative industry professionals who are here to talk to us not only about the challenges, but also about the achievements as well as the hopes for change and reform of the Orang Asli peoples of Malaysia who make up almost 4 million or 12% of the Malaysian populations under the Pakatan Harapan government of the day. So on that note, welcome all. How are you all today? Okay. 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 Yes. All right, so maybe let's get the conversation starting. Yeah. Now, um, Shaq, so you are of Timuan heritage and you are also one of the artists from uh, Orang Asli background who yeah. has been a recipient of the Merdeka Award. That was back in 2017. Can you tell us what the Merdeka Award opened up for you as an artist, as an individual? Uh, Merdeka Award uh, uh, that I received last year was was about the continuation of research that I uh, wanting to do it uh, in, in overseas and uh, to find out the, how the other country uh, represent their indigenous people in terms of their artwork, their heritage, their history, their mm -hmm. culture. So this, this, this research actually allowed me to show my artwork in, in those countries as well as uh, um, I got so many uh, 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 media coverage and, and my artwork and my, my, my story at, and I, I also allow me to pursue my my uh, my lo long time dream as a, to be artist and also to be a researcher at the same time. That's right. So you're kind of bringing both of these things together. Yeah. Now, um, uh, Lenny, for yourself, so you are a pencil illustrator. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started off and uh, why did you choose to go into artistic pursuits? Okay. Mm, so I, I, from my, the kid, I always loved to the art and always feel comfortable with pencil. Right. And then I start uh, my drawing with uh, pencil. And then um, I just um, really love to see uh, expressions of face and then I start to learn how to uh, draw a self-portrait. Right, so we, uh, we actually do have some of your illustrations and pictures. We hope to be playing them in the background soon. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks so real. It's like a photograph. I think that's what a lot of people would have told you, right, when they see it. Um, how do you achieve that uh, realism in the pictures that you okay. draw? Uh, the main thing is we have to be patient with the with uh, with the work, and then um, I do so much research on the internet and look uh, at the artists from other countries' right. uh, works, and then I do more practice. So it is definitely a lot of hard work put yes, in, right? Yes. Now, uh, moving the conversation to uh, Vicky. Vicky, you are an artist, a designer, and a documentary filmmaker. And um, you are also from the Samai community. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you got started off in creative industry and why? Um, I, I, I started from my father. Mm -hmm. uh, he told me that, uh, Vicky, you have a passion and you have a talent. Why not you give back to community what you study and try to uh, give back to the community? Right. And uh, what does your father do, Vicky? Uh, my, fo uh, my father is a former uh, DJ radio at uh, Orang Asli Radio, uh, ICFM. Yeah. So he said to me, uh, why not you inspire young generation by what you, you love to do? <laughs> so carry on what you, you want to do. Right. So when we speak about um, the Orang Asli communities in Malaysia, there is a tendency to say um, eh, or to think incorrectly that it's just one big group. But in fact, every community is individual. So I just want to ask this question to all of you. What does your identity as an Orang Asli mean to you? Any one of you can take it. Sure. Uh, it's, it's mean like, it's, uh, 
show where you come from and uh, uh, your your father came from and your grandmother came from actually shape the way you are and that's why I feel and then and make make me feel proud where I I'm from and then and I want to uh, the people all my friends feel the same uh, just uh, just be proud of who you are mm. it's actually it's to give you confidence confidence in life so um, uh, you were telling me earlier Vicky sometimes when you meet um, other young orang asli in the city especially um, what is their reaction when you speak your own native tongue with them um, uh, usually they like feeling shy because they not confident to speak mm -hmm. their own language is it because they don't speak it fluently or are they shy for uh, other reasons? They shy for other reasons. They feel uh, like a confident like that other people will mock them. Uh, like uh, what you're talking about like that. Right, okay. So how do you all think that we can help to overcome that? First, what do you, what do you think about the way Orang Asli themselves, especially the young, cannot be so shy and be more proud of their culture? Lenny, any ideas? to be who, who we are. We are so unique in our way. So we just, they just can speak um, their own, own language like Sarawak and Sabah people. Yeah. That's right. And it's a very historically rich as well as mm -hmm. diverse culture, no matter which Orang Asli community yeah, you look yeah. at. Right. So on that note, it's time for a quick commercial break. We'll be back right after to continue this conversation on Orang Asli communities as well as their hopes under the new Pakatan Harapan government. So we're still in the midst of our discussion with three Orang Asli or indigenous Malaysian creative industry professionals about the future of not just their art, but of their culture and heritage in New Malaysia. So as we were saying earlier, uh, maybe I'll start off with Shak. So Shak, you have illustrated a book called Tujuan and the Wind. Tujal and the Wind. Yeah. Tujal and the Wind. Yeah. Where did the idea for this come from I and why this one? <laughs> Tujal actually is, is, is a made up name for my, for my village name. My village name is Koja. It's like and a nickname. Then, yeah, it's a nickname. Okay, and then I, I have this fear with the wind. Even now, even now, I got even strong wind. I got really scared. And this how this story started from. And then um, in this in this story, boys talking about this term one uh, boys uh, went to the jungle, and he got lost because he. Uh, scale of the wind and it's right. been chased by the winds mostly and he lost in the jungle and then found uh, three animals along the way and then he finding a way back home. Wow, that's okay. that's I, I love it because it's, it's something from your own experience but yeah. it's also something that kids would definitely like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the reception like to, to Jual in the Wind? Oh, it's, it's actually sold out now. <laughs> oh wow, the book okay. congratulations. Yeah. We're very and, happy and to and hear that. Book is uh, that um, I try to do it in three languages. Right, which uh, are? In Malay, English, and Taman. And um, this, uh, if, if anybody interested in Taman language, you can, you can look in, in, in this book and uh, see what it's actually see, like. See what it's like. To see how, how you can pronounce uh, those words we used to, to speak. Wonderful. Actually, and also, I sort of explain about a little bit about uh, the one legend, yes, about please. folklore in in in, the, in this book. So, so that's uh, I think that's a great way of not just um, sharing your passion, but using your art to yeah. increase mm. the awareness. Mm. Uh, moving to uh, Lenny. So Lenny, you also had a background in the teaching industry. Tell us a little bit about your teaching years. Okay, I've I've been teaching for eight years, I think, uh, from for primary schools. Right. I'm teaching science and music. Uh, so and is that uh, in the urban centers or back in your hometown? Uh, in the cities. Yeah. I'm teaching at Sekolah um, Padang Temba. Right. And um, as a teacher, what is one of the things that you wish was also available in the education system for Orang Asli um, students as well? Or do you think it's enough what is already in the books? Mm, I think 
because uh, I love uh, art so I think maybe they can they can include more include about more about art Okay. Especially from your community, which are the Tamuan, um, similar to Shark's community. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the artistic um, crafts and handicrafts which are more important? Um, well, because from from my hometown where I came, uh, we don't have so much craft. Uh, so, of course, in the background, we are also playing really a couple of visuals. This is a Speed it up. Speed uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Video of you actually uh, in real life drawing your art, right? Yes. So typically speaking, Lenny, how long does it take you to um, finish one piece of this okay. average size? Um, for this for this piece, I I use I think uh, just one week to finish uh, the drawing because it's just like a four size, mm -hmm. and then it's a self portrait. Uh, it's it's not really the the flower and the things that my hair is not really there, but I just Im imagine the things and then put. That's right. put uh, so you make it not just from your imagination, but honestly, it feels like you're creating a photograph. Ah, uh, yeah. It's that realistic. Yes. <laughs> All I can say is that that's that's so incredible, so incredible, especially when you add on the colors yeah. and the texture. Uh, what has been the reception from not just your family, mm -hmm. but people who are interested in your art? What do they usually tell you? What do they say? They always say, uh, like, how, how did you do that? How did you, you make it so realistic? I, right. I just say, just do so much practice. Practice and a lot of practice. Practice will make you... Did you ever um, attend an art course where you trained as an artist or this is something that you have um, just worked on by yourself? No, I just worked by myself. Right. I think that's incredible, absolutely. <laughs> so is there anywhere that we can find your work online? Are you active on social media for your art and um, etc.? For Instagram, I can hashtag Lenny Pencil Drawing. Okay. My website uh, is lennypencildrawing.wixsite.com uh, slash Lenny. And in Facebook, uh, you can find me at Lenny Pencil Drawings. So Lenny Pencil Drawings, and that should take you further. All right. Yeah. So moving into um, Vicky. Now, Vicky, um, tell us a little bit about your documentary, The Art of Nature. What was your inspiration behind making the documentary on this topic and not any other? Okay. Uh, my inspiration uh, doing the documentary is uh, from my father's uh, stuff. He's like to collect a uh, uh, craft because he was a former DJ and uh, he can be uh, like uh, get a gift from a uh, uh, orang kampung. They give uh, they they give to him and he will be a collection. So I I say to him uh, why not we shooting this one mm -hmm. shooting this stuff and we give to the young uh, young young generation to see how how like uh, I mean how like how people make uh, how people make it. Right. So now one other thing that you also do is graphic designs. Tell us a little bit about how you make sure your community's art is also represented. Oh, uh, I will use a a, a culture like uh, implement a pattern of orang asli. So I like uh, to do the design based on uh, my culture, uh, such as my like my T-shirt. Okay, is this something that you have yourself made? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, brilliant. So I love that. But we'll be speaking a little bit more about also the Indigenous Arts Festival, which will be happening very soon once we're back from the. To the nation, still with me, Tamina Kalji, and our conversation on the International Day for uh, World Globally for Indigenous People. So, um, Shak, earlier on you were telling me a little bit about your book, To Jewel and the Wind, but also you were speaking about lack of representation. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I, I it, since I moved in the city, I realized there's still have a uh, lack of representation in, in terms of Indigenous people. In, in peninsula especially or asli in mainstream society for example uh, the especially in, in art scenes that I saw so many gallery does, doesn't have uh, featuring featuring the indigenous art 
and then or any highlights and the highlight the indigenous art as 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 well as a. Uh, the uh, indigenous people been presented in television or, or in the mainstream media, like advertising, uh, advertising and That's right. even in, in the museums. And um, this this actually will lead to the problem of the uh, drop drop out cases in the school. I noticed because uh, they realize they have they feel they have no place. In our society. Exactly, now. and as we're showing in the background right now, this is a, some of just a small um, proportion of Shaq's own work, which definitely shows there is an abundance of Orang Asli talent all around Malaysia at almost 4 million Malaysians. That's yeah. not a small number at yeah. all, right? Yeah. So, what do you hope to see more of? Let's start with the education system, which would maybe help reduce the rates of dropping out among Orang Asli children. I think uh, they need to uh, to reform. I mean, I mean to starting up putting more indigenous uh, uh, knowledge, especially in our history, or textbooks. culture textbooks that need to uh, introduce uh, the the curriculum about the indigenous people. Because I think this will uh, give a uh, um, confidence to younger or honestly who study in the school, give them more. Uh, feeling hope that they want to be success in the school because um, it's all I think this all come from the from their from their what's it called from their uh, uh, self determination and uh, their identity because uh, the history will create the identity and keep that make them feel like a, a Malaysian society make a, a normal normal Malaysia because so far now when I talk when I, I run my workshop in the school Right. So many stu uh, students, uh, they, they told me they feel left out, they feel so embarrassed where they, uh, about their identity. Uh, and, now it lead to the ca bully cases. I understand. Yeah. And also, whatever it is, every Orang Asli community has a very historically rich, diverse yeah. culture, yeah. arts and heritage. Mm. So when we speak about arts and heritage, Lenny, uh, what do you uh, hope to be as an example? for other Orang Asli artists, in particular for women artists? Mm -hmm. I, I, want to, uh, I want to be an inspiration for our people to, so they can value and love our culture. And maybe through my art, uh, our heritage will not lost in this uh, rapid current uh, technology era. And, yeah. yeah, but also how important is it to use technology, especially for Orang Asli youth, so that they are able to be part of society today? Um, like they can, they can post everything now in the internet. That's right. I can and do some research uh, because there's so many things you can find in the internet. Just exactly. Like, like me, also I really. Um, use internet so much in my research and they yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think especially you make a very strong statement by also doing a lot of self-portraits which really helps send out the message of this is who I am, this is where I am in life. Mm -hmm. All right, moving into uh, Vicky. So Vicky, tell us a little bit about the Senori run and what it is. Cool. <coughs> okay, uh, is, uh, is my study project uh, during my degree. Uh, it's actually to revise back the originality of uh, Orang Asli culture in Senoy. So uh, that's an issue. So I have to come out the, to, to solve the issue by doing a games app, uh, application mobile. So uh, the Senoran, I, I base, off, base on that uh, expression. Makes so of course speak. we're playing the poster in the background. Ah, yeah. It's very catchy. I love the fact that the illustration really tells and um, is able to communicate the joy of the moment, right? So this is also connected to the Indigenous Art Festival. Can you share with me when that's happening and what's going to be the highlight and focus of it? Uh, this year, the Indigenous uh, Art Festival will be held in the uh, Shalom, Selangor, located in a uh, botanic uh, garden, right. botanic park of uh, Selangor. And, uh, this year, uh, they highlight the diversity of the indigenous people in Asia, especially in Malaysia, uh, Sabah, Sarawak, Indonesia, Vietnam, 
Right. And so this will be happening, of course, on the 4th and the 5th of August. This is the 4th edition, and it's also in conjunction with the International Day, which is on 9th of August. Now, when we speak about um, challenges for all the orang Aslis of Malaysia, in each of your opinions, what is the most um, important or critical challenge? Mm -hmm. critical, critical challenge for me, I think, are the self-determination on their, on their uh, traditional territory right, like traditional customary land where uh, often been violated in in past few years. And I, I think that's actually give attention to the indigenous people who live in the community. Because Very true. For, for example, currently we are having the problem of the Tamiyar people in yeah, Kelantan exactly. who are actually being blockaded yeah, from their land. Yeah. Now issues like these, um, they can also be addressed with the authorities not mm. giving in to institutionalized exactly. racism and discrimination. Mm. Mm. So how and how would you like to see these issues covered in mainstream media from now on? Um, for me, I think it's, uh, we have to uh, our own committee have to be aware mm -hmm. if some like this thing happen, we should help them like doing some charity. So. Uh, we have for uh, them to get back their land. That's right. And also help them with their own self-determination. Mm. You were mentioning a little bit about a t-shirt mm. project. Yeah, um, I'm running this uh, charity t-shirt for the uh, Tamiya and, and Go Musangs. Uh, I'm actually helping them make uh, the, the workshop, helping them how to make a t-shirt in a, in a uh, reasonable, uh, easy way to do it. Yeah. And then they can sell the t-shirt uh, to fund the their their project to protect the land in the Gomusa, and this t-shirt we we will selling in the uh, indigenous uh, uh, festival. This That's right. And this so definitely, weekend. that would be a highlight, and mm. we are definitely hoping that many people will end up yeah. there to this weekend. So thank you all so much for your time today. We hope that you go from height to height, and not just your own personal art, yeah. but also for your communities. Yeah. So there we have it, the nation special, focusing on indigenous Malaysian artists and what they are doing for themselves and their communities. I'm Tamina Kauji, signing off on the nation. Join you again next time. Mm.